everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host Kat Krabby Terror 8 and here we are in episode 22 of The Investigator Games with everybody's favourite psychologist Carolyn Fern and welcome to The Investigators from the Circle Undone campaign. So this is the last tranche of investigators before we move to uh, a new scenario. So we're, we're heading towards the the latter part of the investigator games based on the gathering and um, what a time it's been indeed so if you're new to the channel and you don't know what the investigator games is you know think of it something like a solo version of the hunger games so each week we take uh, an investigator and this week it's carolyn fern we put them into the gathering and see how they go and based on their um, experience victory points we give them some experience points and put them in a league table like this one from the top of the league table down to the bottom and we can see 21 investigators so far uh, and Safina, Akachi and Leo up the top they not only managed to successfully investigate both of the attic study and cellar but they also and defeat the ghoul priest but they also managed to defeat an additional ghoul as well which gave them the seven points you can see there's quite a spread of uh spread in the league table right down to poor old calvin <laughs> who you may have seen last week uh really crashed and burned in a very unfortunate way um and only ended up with three experience points because a uh, a rather ill-timed um freezing fog or whatever it's called uh hit the cellar <laughs> which made uh, it very difficult to uh, investigate uh, the cellar. So, uh, yes, we can see but a, a, a huge range. A couple of things to point out. If you are going to do the stranded six-pointer, which is one of the more popular responses, six and four are the kind of the two popular ones. If you're a six-pointer, that means you investigate all of the, 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 the clues and defeat the ghoul priest. Uh, Ashcan Pete holds the, the, the record with eight turns, which is pretty fast. Uh, be interesting to see if any other investigator manages to do it quite that fast. I thought Ursula might um, give him a run for his money on that, but it wasn't to be with Ursula. Um, and if, you're a, if you have the um, joy of being a seven-pointer, you've just got to do that in more than 11 turns. Nobody's achieved eight experience points which would require defeating both of the ghouls because it's hard to do and also uh, you know, they don't they don't always come up it depends on the draw so that hasn't happened so far so there we go there's the league table so um yes i spoke to carolyn you can see her there now in the study sitting quietly um just waiting uh, for the investigator games to begin, the crowds um, moving in and taking their seats as well. So um, I spoke to Carolyn in the green room. Um, really, f I have to say, I really felt fantastic after speaking with her. I spoke to her for more than an hour. She's a very empathic and understanding individual. I really felt like she was a friend of mine. It was. I really just felt so much better after speaking to her. It was really fantastic. The only thing that was sort of left me with a slight reservation was after an hour, she said, okay, time's up. Uh, and she'd clearly been watching the clock. But, you know, she's a psychologist, so I understand, uh, you know, for her time is money. So um, fa fair enough. But a couple of other things that she mentioned that actually herself and Father Matteo have now teamed up to help those investigators who might be struggling in the investigator games and having some difficulties and requiring some general support if you like now she did mention then i obviously went to calvin and zoe being by the bottom of the table but she sort of mentioned that calvin and zoe are sort of beyond <laughs> help and support they're sort of in their own world but she did say that lola and jim and rex in particular were active clients uh, of, of hers perhaps uh, rex might uh, be drinking a little less than he has in the past i asked her about how well she thinks she's going to do in the investigator games and all she would really say is that actually winning and losing doesn't matter a little bit like father mateo said but her explanation for that is a little bit different to father mateo's for her she said the journey is is more important than the destination 
um, the process is more important than the attainment. So uh, taking a, a different view and a, I guess quite a philosophical view on the investigator games um, there. And I can, I can understand that. Uh, so um, Carolyn Fern herself is an interesting investigator and quite a complicated investigator to play, particularly solo. Um, we'll get on to her deck in a second, but in the Fantasy Flight Games um, text that goes with her opening deck, it talks about her being a support character. So she's a little bit like Min in that whilst you can play her solo, um, she's a little bit more challenging if you decide to do that. And in fact, her ability to take multiple cards from different factions is also quite a challenge because there is a lot of different ways you could build a Carol Fern deck. So uh, she's a little bit less straightforward. And I would, um, I would point you to two videos that I've watched. Uh, sorry, not two videos. A video and a podcast, um, which I think uh, are excellent on this topic. So um, drawn to the Flame Pop Flame podcast, the podcast that was is so famous they named a card after it. I think it's episode 86 um, actually goes into some detail about the challenges of building a deck uh, with Carolyn Fern, uh, which I won't go into detail here, but but it's well worth a listen. And Twisted Tentacle In, uh, his, uh, Vase Odin's video on his deck tech of Carolyn Fern is also an excellent source as well. So I would heartily recommend both of those. And uh, I'll leave, leave links to those in the notes as usual. So just my take on Carolyn Fern, that, and I, as with all of these investigators, I always, uh, you know, run through um, the gathering, you know, test test run through if I haven't played them before, and I haven't played Carolyn before. I know she's been out in the Arkham Horror card game world for a while while through a book I think it is I don't know very much about that but she had she has been out and about for a while but I've never uh, played uh, Carolyn and so just 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 looking at her stats she uh, her stats are okay the problem the main problem with Carolyn Fern's stats with three wall powers okay for intellect is is reasonably good but two fight and two evade so strangely enough she's she is a guardian but in many ways feels like a seeker more than a, a guardian i suppose uh so the fact that she only has two fight and two uh, vitality two strength two vitality means that her ability to manage enemies is really quite challenging because if we take someone like ursula for example um, she has reasonably high uh, vitality, I think four. So even though her fight's one, your ability to actually evade enemies is reasonably good. On the flip side, um, someone like Leo, for example, who has a one uh, vitality, has reasonable fight. So, you know, you don't worry about trying to evade enemies. You just tank them and kill them. So having both of those low really is a challenge. And so... Really, it then comes down to how to manage her through any scenario, you know, not just the gathering. The other thing is her special abilities do lend themselves really well to multiplayer because she can be that sort of a horror healer in the um, in the um, scenario in multiplayer, and she has a very high sanity threshold and. But all of her effects really kind of rest around that. So um, when when a card you have heals and horror from yourself or an ally, you get a resource. And then if you're Elder Sign, you can heal a horror from an, an investigator or ally at your location. So, And then if you have your signature card in, it, it kind of compounds there, which all, is all fine if you've got all those in place. Um, and healing horror can be helpful, but it, it, it feels a little bit light on because um, it's either never going to be enough or it's it's just feels a little bit like it's not uh, a lot to, to, to do compared to some other, uh, well, 
most of the other investigators and what their sort of special abilities are in that way. So she's going to be quite a challenge, um, and I would be, I would be, um, it would be remiss of me to if I didn't say that I'm. I don't. I don't imagine that Carolyn is going to do particularly well in the gathering. I mean, I could be wrong, but um, I think a little bit the odds are stacked against her in a solo uh, scenario. Um, but let's have a look at her deck now. This is the. This is not a deck I've put together. And I think, like I said, the thing with Carolyn is you can, there's sort of many paths you can go down. Um, but this deck is very much oriented towards clue gathering, which I'm glad about that because I think if Carolyn is, is going to do well in the gathering, she needs to get through it as fast as possible. So if we just start here with her signature card, Hypnotic Therapy. Now I know that she has alternative um, signature cards and weaknesses. I'm not going to use them here because these are the ones that are listed in the official Fantasy Flight Games um, <clears throat> PDF that's put out. So I'm going to use that. Um, I'm going to stick to that. I've done that with every investigator and I think that's the fair thing to do. So her hypnotic therapy, actually, if you get it down on the table, it works reasonably well with her special abilities. So she can exhaust hypnotic therapy, test to intellect, which is not a big deal for her. And if you succeed, heal horror from an investigator, which is obviously herself, and you get to draw a card. So uh, you can use hypnotic therapy if you have another card which heals horror. You can exhaust hypnotic therapy and you can heal an additional horror. So for example, there the card in this deck, which which is the obvious one here, there aren't a ton of heals horror cards, but this is one of them, first aid, uh, heal, a, heal a horror. So if you have this out on the table with hypnotic therapy, there's some nice synergies there. There's also fearless that allows you to heal a horror as well. That's about it. So the the deck isn't exactly chock full of heals horror. There's no Peter Silvestri in here or other people like that. But there are a couple of cards that allow you to do that. On the flip side, her weakness essentially just puts a, a kind of a kibosh, <laughs> if you like, on that. So basically, ra Rational Thought gets four horror on it. And basically... Um, Basically, you can't heal horror from cards other than Rational Thought. And you can't gain resources from that reaction ability. So basically, you've got to basically heal the horror from from this instead, basically. So it shuts that down. The weakness I drew at random was, again, internal injury, um, uh, which is just basically you, you take direct damage, which given given her rather low health is something you wouldn't want to be hanging around. So those are those sort of card signature cards and weakness cards. And as I said, the big strength in the deck and the thing that we've got to do is get is get through the gathering as fast as possible, a little bit like other seekers, because we don't want monsters. It's even worse now because our ability to evade monsters is also challenging. And so we've got lots of cards to do that. We've got Malign Christopher, so we want him if we can get him in our opening hand because we'll get more resources. And also that helps our intellect. There's there's the magnifying glass, there's deduction, there's working a hunch, so that and there's flashlight and there's perception. So there's the the deck is chock full of of um, clue getting. And if you're not clue getting, then this is a great way to get Leader Chandler on board. There are a couple of new cards which are in the circle undone, which appear here, um, which also help with clue getting. There's what's called the fingerprint kit. Um, and I should say, uh, sorry, I didn't say this before, spoilers, if you're new to the game or you haven't played Arkham Horror before, the card game before, please go and do that. If you don't want anything about the Circle Undone spoiled as well, I would I would urge, urge you, there's only a couple of cards in here, but uh, um, if you don't really want to see, sorry, any of the cards from Circle Undone, um, then uh, don't don't watch anymore. I do apologize for that. But I mean, there's no, it's, it's only the player cards here. I'm not spoiling anything that isn't already out there. But 
just thought I'd say. So fingerprint kit kit is three supplies. You exhaust fingerprint kit, kit, fingerprint kit. You spend a supply. You investigate. You get plus one. And if you succeed, you discover an additional clue at your location. So that's the fingerprint kit. Pretty pricey. Quite expensive, the old fingerprint kit, but uh, can help. This card is really interesting, though. Connect the dots. Again, it's pretty pricey. Fast play after you discover the last clue at your location. Discover two clues at a location with a lower printed shroud value than your location. So I thought about this. So what you could do is, if you've got connect the dots, and it's a bit situational, but potentially you could go up to the attic um, and immediately leave the attic and go down to the cellar, discover the clues in the cellar, and then you can use connect the dots to get the um, to get the clues up in the attic. That's the way uh, that would have to work. So um, you can obviously <laughs> get clues from a from a hidden location because you because the shroud value technically kind of doesn't exist. But but if we did have this in place and say we had the flashlight. We have Malay and Christopher. What we could do is pop up to the attic, uncover it, and then immediately pop down to the cellar, get all the clues in the cellar, and immediately get the attic ones, which would be incredibly efficient. So this does have potential. Um, worst case, though, it's another way of getting Lita Chandler. The other thing this deck has, which is really, it feels like it's totally overdone on um, clue getting, really, is Drawn to the Flame. So it's also got drawn to the flame, which allows you to discover two clues at your location. So um, always handy. So there's a ton of ways to get clues. So I don't think that getting clues is going to be a problem for us. And in fact, we need to do that reasonably fast. The deck also has some guardian cards. It has this new card here from the Circle Undone, which is called Steadfast, which essentially, depending on your... Um, if you have five or total remaining health and sanity, you get an extra willpower and a fight pip. And if you have ten or more, then it's a three-three. So uh, it's sort of like a in the early stages, it can be kind of like a, a sort of a I don't know super effective sort of um, card from that perspective with three willpower to manage those um, encounter cards. It's a bit almost like an unexpected courage in a sense, but it's a bit more restricted. So I have seen a lot of talk about this card online, and I think the consensus seems to be that you're just better off with unexpected courage, which isn't depending dependent on your health and sanity, because this is strongest when you're at your strongest, and um, it kind of gets weaker as you get weaker, whereas unexpected courage is much more flexible in that way. But it's in there, and it's got fight pips. So this can be used for fight and willpower. There's a machete in here, so it would be good to have the machete out, and there's a knife in here. And also there's a shriveling. So there's three ways of um, fighting. So three ways to take out the ghoul priest in various ways. Um, so having these on the table, shriveling and machete, is going to be important if we're going to actually get the clues and get out of here as fast as possible. There is a mind over matter, but the problem with mind over matter is that um, the Carolyn's are uh, only a two in agility. So unless you've got enough resources to power hyper awareness, because there's no um, there's no um, um, you know, there's not really many boosts to agility in this deck. It's kind of really not, not, not a great card. So again, it's, it would be situational having enough resources. So for example, if Malign Christopher's, you've managed to get a ton of resources and then you can use hyper awareness with this. It's got a dodge in it as well. And it's got a guard dog, which, you know, having a guard dog. So I think the other thing is Carolyn is going to struggle in this scenario without an ally or both allies, Malign Christopher for the early part of the game and the guard dog for the latter part of the game when we could take on the ghoul priest. Incredibly helpful because at least if there's that um, it retaliate, at least we're doing some damage. Uh, and that's really it. There's, there's a few other bits and pieces of cards in here, uh, like, you know, Old Book of Law, which is always good and things like that. There's another ally to find the Old Book of Law. But really, it feels sort of like a seeker deck with, you know, 
yeah, a little smattering of guardian cards and smattering of it's a bit of it's a bit of a mishmash. So um, I, th I think that's its problem. It's it's um, a, a little bit of everything. So it kind of it's it's lost focus. And I think I'm not a deck tech kind of person, but I think if you're going to take a Carolyn deck, then you need to lean into a particular style, whether it's the clue getting or it's more a sort of a, a mystic style deck with you know other support cards um, and whilst this is very strong in clue getting it feels like it's over egged on the clue getting to some way in some ways at the expense of, of other things um, unexpected courage would have been nice or mind over matter those sorts of cards which are just uh, not mind over matter so um you know th th those kind of cards are not in here guts is not in here guts would have been very helpful because we're a little bit vulnerable to um, event draws. So yeah, that's the deck. So um, I don't feel like this 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 deck's as optimal as it perhaps could could be, but you know, we, that's the hand we're dealt. No, no pun intended. So here we are with the gathering ready to go. Everything's set up. Here we are in the study. Carolyn stands up and waves at the crowd. The crowd cheers. Two clues all set up in the study. These are just set up here so we don't have to do it later. We've got our five um, five resources. And what we'll do now is we'll just read out the, uh, the agenda and the act deck and we can get going. So what's going on? It's late at night and you're holed up in your study researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your heart parlor down the hall. Did I leave my um, my um, relaxation meditation tape running in my uh, consulting room? Hmm. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. As you invest, you, as you leap, well, she's not really a leaper. As you get up to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid, solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. Now, having a nine sanity, I can imagine Carolyn Fern going, isn't that interesting? I wonder if there's uh, some perceptual anomaly happening while I'm looking at this wall. It strikes me as that kind of person. So there we are. We're trapped in our study. We've got to find a way out. And here we are. Fav my favorite part of the whole game. Turn one, we've got a dry hand. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, quite clearly, we want Milan Christopher. So getting Milan Christopher would be a really good, good start because that would give us a five intellect and mean we could move fast. So getting Milan Christopher onto, in our first opening hand would be great. Um, also getting shriveling or machete as well. Um, would also be good, particularly a machete or something, because just so we can manage um, rats or ghoul minions or something that might come along along the way. It would be nice to get our signature um, asset as well and put that on the table. That would also be very helpful if we can do that. So they're the sorts of cards I'm looking for. Um, but particularly Milan Christopher in this early stage. So let's see what we draw, and we draw deduction. Well, deduction's a good card because, I mean, it means we can, you know, we can get two clues, so it's it's nice and fast. So it's not a terrible card. Uh, we also get fingerprint kit. Okay, here we go. So um, we could get the fingerprint kit out, and um, it's sort of like a um, a quick quick way of getting things as well so there's a second card third card you wouldn't think these were shuffled would you <laughs> so we have got a magnifier we've got three cards now that allow us to quickly search for clues fourth card is medical text and the final card is ah oh, the line christopher what a weird draw oh my goodness what a weird draw it's all seeker cards and apart from medical texts it is um it's all, um, <laughs> so the question is, what do we want to keep and what do we want to throw? This is quite, um, yeah, because obviously Milan and Christopher were keeping him. Medical text is about healing damage. And to be honest, we don't really have many ways of healing damage. It's not really, we don't get any benefits from it in terms of Carolyn Fern's ability, but having it there can be handy. Uh, as long as we don't fail. Magnifying glass is also nice because um, that would give us 
four, five. That would give us a six. That would make it really nice and fast. And that means that the fingerprint kit feels a bit on the slow side compared to the others. Um, although it does allow us to find two clues or an additional clue at a location, but it's really kind of competing because either we spend the four to bring out Milan Christopher, or we kind of spend four to bring out the fingerprint kit. And to be honest, you know, Milan Christopher. So I probably put the um, the fingerprint kit aside. Um, I think deduction is great because it allows you to instantly get two clues. Uh, the magnifying glass is great as well because it it really does mean that we're really cooking with gas from an, f gas from a and we can spend we can get them all on the table fast. The medical texts I think I'm going to also put in now because it's not of immediate need. Um, so I feel like we keep these three because we do want to discover clues as soon as possible. But I'm going to draw two new cards, and I get perception and I get. Um, water protection okay we'll put these in and shuffle that up now um, water protection is pretty good when we take a horror and that's fine we can take lots of horror but it, what it means is, is if we draw something particularly um, grasping hands we're not we, we probably don't want to do a grasping hands we can probably manage a rotting remains but a grasping hands would be three three damage from a grasping hands for example which would be very much on the cards feels like something we don't want to do so that's okay and it's a it's a good card because it's flexible so what's missing in all of this is there's no machetes no um no shrivels no knives so we're missing some kind of fight but we've got what we wanted which is some nice clue getting so let's Let's begin then with our three actions. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious what we're gonna do here. So the first thing we're going to do is spend four. I'm gonna bring out the good doctor. So we brought out Malign Christopher, which means immediately we're, um, we're at a five intellect when investigating. Um, And we might as well spend another one. Uh, now this is a fast action. So this is just a fast action to bring out the um, magnifying glass. So it's a fast action, so that doesn't cost an action. We'll just whip out the magnifying glass. So we really, we're really kind of cooking with gas here in terms of investigatoring. But we've used up all our resources. But because we've got Malone Christopher, we should be getting those back. So that was our that wasn't our second action. So our second action, I think we just we want resources. So I'm just going to I'm just going to do two actions of investigating. Um, the other thing I could do is throw in the deduction, get the two clues, and get into the hallway immediately. Now the only um, and then we could get up to the attic. So we could literally be up into the attic in the first turn. Oh, that feels, that feels like a good thing to do. Or do we keep it for the cellar? Oh boy. My, my, the main thing is, is we need to move as quickly as possible to get through this. So I've got a choice. I can keep deduction and I'll get two resources for two investigations which means then we're keeping deduction for the seller um, where, but then we've got, uh, yeah. Um, my feeling is, is the longer we take to do things, the more difficult it's going to become. So I think we need to do things fast and we've got lots of other ways of getting clues. Clues getting is not an issue in this deck. So here we go, famous last words. So I'm going to, um, as a second action, I'm going to investigate the study and we have a four, five, six, six versus two. I'm going to make that a seven a seven versus two. So unless we auto fail, we've absolutely done it. Chaos Bag has an Elder Sign. My Elder Sign is plus one. You can heal a horror. Well, there's no horror to heal. <laughs> but uh, that means we get both clues. 
and because we successfully investigated, we get a resource. Fantastic. So that's all good. So that was our second action. So for our third action, yeah, so we put that out, a second action. For our third action, no, before we do our third action, I'm going to spend the two clues and I'm going to flip um, the trapped. So you notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see a door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob um, and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump carefully through the doorway, landing clumsily on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of a rot and decay. So put aside the hallway, the cellar, the attic, and the parlour. Discard any enemies in the study. Place the investigator in the hallway and remove the study from the game. So doing. Flip the hallway. Doink. Get rid of the study. Doink. And uh, get rid of that. And we're in the barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move towards it, interestingly, intense heat forces you to back away. What an interesting perceptual phenomenon. Picking up a handful of dirt, I wonder what will happen if I do this. You toss it at the barrier and watch in circumspect horror as the dirt incinerates. I've never seen such a phenomenon before. It's so interesting how I'm feeling this horror when I see dirt incinerate. Isn't that interesting? Let me examine my feelings for a second. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or the attic that can help. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may as a group spend the requisite number of clues to advance. So there we go. And then for our third action, we will go up to the attic. la di da di da Up to the attic we go. Donk. Two clues. One, two. And, oh... Animal cruelty is something that we're not happy about. It's unethical, it's irresponsible, it's just disgusting, even if it is a malformed beast. Let's take a horror. Ouch! Or do we give that to Malign Christopher? Um, well, we can heal it from an eye after that. Let's, let's give Malign Christopher the horror. Maybe, maybe she's fine with it. It's Malign Christopher who's more of an issue with the malformed beast. So there we go, we've taken a horror. And we are here up in the attic. Wow, what an action-packed first turn. So let me see. Carolyn, uh, we brought out Milan Christopher. We fast brought out the, um, the magnifying glass. So that was all term, the first, first action. Then we used a deduction to very expertly find two clues straight away. Um, yep, it was successful. We got an additional clue. We threw them in which means by our second action we were in the hallway, and then we, our third action we went up to the attic. So, um, very fast. Um, like I said, I think if we're going to get through this, we need to do it quite fast. So there we go. That's the end of uh, the first act, first turn. It feels like we've played half the game. <laughs> Some of the investigators are up to turn four before they get to the attic. Here we are, we're in the attic. So let's move forward into the enemy phase or the... Yes, the enema phase, as I like to call it. There are no enemas to speak of, and hopefully there won't be any upkeep phase. This is perfect. A flashlight. What What more could we possibly want for the cellar? <laughs> Which is great, because that means we can keep perception and use it to get Leader Chandler on board, who we will desperately need. And we will also desperately need a shriveling. If we can get shriveling then we can get out, get to the hallway, get a, get Leader Chandler, and then we can shrivel this ghoul priest to death. Yes, anyway, let's see how we go. So there we go, all good. So we move into the mythos phase. Here we are in the mythos phase. There is one doom. And this is where uh, we will see what we get. So we look at the first encounter card, and this could derail everything from here on in. And the encounter card is... Hmm, Yes, it's a grasping hands. It's the card I called out before. So this is a problem. This is a problem because grasping hands, we could end up with a lot of damage. Um, okay, so we have two choices here. We could um, use the Ward of Protection to get rid of the grasping hands. 
uh, or we take a risk and we start at minus one, which means likelihood is we're looking at a, looking at three damage. Um, we don't want to lose Malay and Christopher, so we will be wearing three damage, uh, and we've got to take another damage in the cellar. So then we'll be clomping around with four damage, which means if we get one retaliation from the ghoul priest, we're pretty much gone, and there's not a lot of cards to heal us. So I'm actually thinking we spend a resource and we indeed cancel it and take the horror. Draw a non-weakness treachery card, cancel that card's effect and take a horror. Yep. I think I think that's the right thing to do um, because of all the cards, that's the one where we're most vulnerable. Um, yes, and you know, who knows, we could draw another Grasping Hands and then it's all game over. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't, I feel like we, 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 uh, we needed to do that. Okay. So that's the end of the, um, mythos phase. And we managed to avoid the grasping hands with a ward of protection. Um, so here we are in the investigation phase, three actions on Carolyn. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty clear what we do from here. We investigate, we're a, we're a, sorry, we are a six, four, five, six, and uh, versus a, uh, a one. So it basically, as, lo as long as we don't get the auto fail, it's all good. So the first, we'll investigate, here we go, first action, and we do auto fail. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind, the malform beast is affecting us more. We'll try again. Chaos bag has minus one. So we succeed and we get a resource. Thank you, Marlon Christopher. And uh, we'll do it again. Uh, Chaos bag has, is that a minus one again? Minus one, minus one. Yes, we do it again. And we get another resource. Hooray. And there we go. There's our first, there's our first victory point. Crag goes wild. <sighs> Milan, Christopher, and Carolyn wave at the crowd. Carolyn with her magnifying glass in one hand, wave at the crowd as they manage to successfully investigate the attic and get the first victory point. And it's only turn two. So I was hoping we'd get back down into the hallway, but that's not to be, but that's all right. We, uh, we, we did auto fail um, the first time couldn't quite find that clue it was in the barrel under the malformed beast that's always that's always the one the crowd giggles at when they put the clue in the barrel under the malformed beast that's always a bit icky so didn't see it couldn't find it then they did find it and the other one in the paint pot so all good so uh yeah we had quite a successful round so let's move into uh, the enema phase for turn two and there are no enemas to speak of our enemies indeed so we move into the upkeep phase and we get connecting the dots well um that would have been <laughs> nah, that's the problem with this card that would have been great before it's now it's fine though because we can use it in the cellar or we can use it to get leader chandler on board um, but we we still have no machete and we still have no shriveling. So for all I know, they're the bottom two on the on the on the deck. And so that's we're gonna spend, you know, six turns trying to find the those cards. The old book of law would be kind of handy because that would help us find what we need. Um, but at the moment, no go. So there we go. That's all right. Things are going reasonably okay at the moment. Having said that, guess where we're at? The Mythos phase. So it's two on the Mythos phase, but we're already finished in the attic. So here we go again. Big deep breath. What are we going to get this time? Because uh, from experience, it only takes one bad encounter card draw and everything's, it's all over Red Rover for Carolyn. So let's see what we get. And the encounter deck has... Oh, So this is the <clears throat> this is probably one of the worst cards we could have hoped to get. Hmm. So that really does that is really a problem. So it's a problem because we're a two fight and a two evade, and we have no cards here that allow us to um, to boost that. All we've got are intellect cards. 
So, um, yes, so I don't, I don't know because we would have to draw a plus one or an elder sign to evade or to fight the ravenous ghoul. So this is what I was hoping wouldn't happen. Okay. All right, we'll have to see if we can manage to evade the ravenous ghoul some way. Because uh, fighting the ravenous ghoul is a problem unless we have something like shriveling or the machete. Uh, even then, it's not, not the best. So we move into the investigation phase, three actions onto, um, onto Carolyn. So I have a couple of choices here. I can try and draw the um, elder sign, or I can try and draw a plus one to evade. Or I can take a tax of opportunity um, and try and uh, get the card, get some cards. And I feel like I should try that in the first instance because um, otherwise, going to be things are going to be very um, difficult. So our first action is to draw a card. Okay. So um, so the question is, do we say goodbye to Malai and Christopher? And I think we're going to have to. So we drew a card, which means a tax of opportunity. So, um, yeah, Malai and Christopher is going to take a damage. And I'm going to, and well, no, he can also take the horror. I think he can take both at the same time. So he takes the damage and the horror and dies, obviously. Um, so that's the first action. And then the second action, I'm going to spend three. One, two three and bring out the guard dog. Now that provokes an attack of opportunity so I take a damage and a horror. No, not a do. I take a damage and a horror. Horror and a damage. Um, yep. And for our third action um, I'm so I've got two choices here with the third action. I can just try and evade him and hope I get a plus one or an elder sign. Or I could draw another card. And the the I'll have to take the horror, but the guard dog can take the damage and damage the ravenous ghoul. So what's going to be a better thing to do? I'm actually thinking that drawing another card is probably preferable. So I draw it. Oh, rational thought. Okay, put four horror on it. So that means we can't heal horror either, even if we could. So I take the horror. Guard dog takes the damage, and guard dog um, deals damage to the ghoul. Oh dear. See what I mean about things uh, going pear-shaped very, very quickly. So that was our third action. So that was a horrible turn. So we had to face a ravenous ghoul with nothing to face it with. So what we did was we um, drew a card, which provoked an attack of opportunity, which Milan Christopher took the damage and the horror. We then played the guard dog, which meant we took an additional damage and a horror. And um, then we drew another card, which was our rational thought, our weakness, which means we took another horror. Guard dog took damage and damaged the ravenous ghoul. So there we go. That was an unfortunate turn. And then we're in the enema phase, and indeed he attacks again. So the guard dog takes another damage. We take another horror. Uh, and therefore, the ravenous ghoul takes a damage. So, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so that's the enemy phase. We now move into the upkeep phase. So there we go, steadfast. So at the moment, we're on five. So which means we're on five 
plus 611. So we do still have 10 or more remaining health and sanity, which means steadfast is a 3-3, three, three, which hopefully we can use either for fighting or we can use it if we get a nasty encounter card that we need to deal with. And in fact, if we get rotting remains, we probably will be using it for that. So we move into the Mythos phase, and there we go. There's the three Doom on the Mythos phase. So we'll just take those off. We'll flip the... The house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed, and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. The lead investigator must either... Uh, each investigator discards a card at random or takes two horror. There is no way we're taking two horror. So we discard a card at random. And the random discard is flashlight. Of course it is. <laughs> the only saving grace is there is another flashlight in the deck. So rise of the ghouls. Rise of the ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do, indeed. All right, there we go. Let's see what the counter, encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has grasping hands. Ooh. Now, the problem with Grasping Hands is we can't use Steadfast for that. We can't use any of these cards. We don't want to use up any damage on the Guard Dog, so we will be taking the damage, which is more than likely to be three, and there's not a lot we can do about that. We're going to be like Calvin, living on the edge. Here we go. So we're a two versus a three. So we're in a minus one already. Chaos Bag has Skull, which is a minus one because there's a ghoul enemy. So that takes our mind so that takes our two to a one. One versus three, so that's two damage. Okay. That wasn't as bad. That could have been worse. So, you know, could have been worse. Not too bad. Alright, that's the um that's the mythos phase. Wow, this is uh this has gone from good to very ordinary. Then we move into the investigation phase. Three actions on um, Carolyn. And um, I think we want to provoke the attack of opportunity. I don't see any... I mean, we could try and evade, but again, the chances of us evading. We could fight, actually. I hadn't thought of that. We could fight. So what's our remaining? We have three plus five. Eight. So we've only got eight remaining, which means we would only get two fight. So that would give us a fight of four. So we would be a four versus a three with no additional, which just feels unlikely, whereas it's a sure thing if we draw a card. So let's draw a card and get another flashlight. Excellent. That provokes an attack of opportunity. So we take another horror. The guard dog dies by taking a damage. And goes, but also at the same time does another damage to the ravenous ghoul who dies. That leaves us feeling horrified and fairly damaged, but still intact. That was a first action. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh boy. So what to do now? Well, I think let's get down to the cellar. And let's try and get this, these other... Um, these are the clues. So I think for our second action, we move to the hallway. And then for our third action, we go down to the cellar, flip the cellar, two clues on the cellar. And we, uh, as we're going down, we're so busy with our magnifying glass, looking at the stairs and thinking so rationally that we don't know what we're doing. And we slip and go tumbling down the stairs. Ouch! So we take yet another damage. Oh dear, internal injuries are starting to look pretty nasty now. So we are at four damage. We really are on the edge in terms of damage. There is a medical text in there somewhere, so it is possible we could heal it. Horror, actually, the ability to heal horror is, is very, very limited now. Um, so, yes. Um, 
so you can't heal horror through through her reaction ability um oh dear so it's all and also uh, if you get the elder sign you have to um do it onto rational thought okay anyway that's our go. So our go was we got rid of the, the guard dog, essentially. We didn't. The guard dog killed the ravenous ghoul. And then we got down into the cellar. We took more damage. We've got the flashlight. So next go, we'll be able to bring out the flashlight and investigate the cellar, assuming we don't get any nasty cards along the way. So there's no enemies to speak of. In turn four, only in turn four, upkeep phase. Ah, and we get... Fast play, discover a clue. So that's good. So that means we can we can be super fast if we need to, although it would be good to keep that in perception for... We've got lots of these, actually. We've got, you know... Actually, I don't think we need them all. So let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get the other clue and let's get out of here. So there we go. Mm -hmm. So that's the upkeep phase, but no shriveling and no machete. Um, so the first... Doom on Rise of the Ghouls. So here we are in the Mythos phase. What's the encounter deck going to throw to us this time? The encounter deck gives us a... Oh my goodness, thank goodness. I nearly had a heart attack because I thought it was the Icy Ghoul. It's the Flesh Eater. So the Flesh Eater... Num, 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 goes here. Uh, someone been here? Mm, I think I missed somebody. Well, I can smell them, but I can't see them. Mm. So the Flesh Eater <clears throat> spawns in the attic, who's not going to be a problem at the moment. Um, call me old-fashioned, but I don't think we'll be running up to the attic to deal with the Flesh Eater any time soon. So that's all right. We can get on with what we're doing in the cellar. So we move into the investigation phase, and we put three actions onto um, Carolyn. And um, I think we're ready to um, investigate the cellar. So we are a five for investigating, and it's a four. So um, yeah, let's. Um, so what we could do is just throw cards away. I don't think so. I think we spend two. Bring out the flashlight, and that's got three supplies. Let's do this right. Supplies. We get out the flashlight. That's our first action. Both hand slots are now taken up. Second action is uh, hello. Second action then makes this a two versus a five. That's pro that's great. Let's just do that. Two versus a five. Is this a fast play? Yes. Yeah. So if we fail one, we can use this if we need to. So two versus five. Chaos bag has skull. So that's successful. What's our second action? Now, we can't spend two, I just realized, because we've only got one. So we can't use working a hunch for that. So, but that's fine. Let's, um, let's flashlight again. So we flashlight again. Two versus five. Chaos bag has... Is that a skull? A skull again. Okay. There we go. Crag goes wild. There is the second one. My goodness, that took some effort to get there, but we did it. We did it in two goes, two turns, two clues. Fantastic. Crag goes wild. <sighs> Carolyn waves. She's a bit shaky. She's she's shaking, and she, but she's waving, and she's uh, got a bit of internal bleeding going on, but she's all right. She's, she's, she's holding up. Just. <laughs> so um, that's great. So we've got the clues. We've got all the clues that we need. We've got the vi two victory points. All we need now, all we need, is... Um, either a machete, um, because if we had a machete, then our fight, and we had Leader Chandler, of course, our fight would be two, three, would only be four. So the machete is still going to be not really that great, because, yeah, two, three, four. Uh, so actually, really, we need the shriveling. Shriveling is what we need, although that gives us a th three. Uh, which is slightly better than the fight, I guess. But it's not much better. Oh dear, so we might be in a bit of a bind here. <laughs> we might have, at least we'll, if we can get in and get Leader Chandler, we can have a go, and if it's not going well, we can just resign. 
So we'll just have to see how we go because nothing, there's no shame in resigning, Carolyn. No shame in resigning at all. To get this far, I think you've done reasonably well. So anyway, that's the end of uh, our investigation phase. So we move into the enemy phase and thankfully there are no enemies to speak of, at least where we are. So we move into the upkeep phase and we get drawn to the flame. Well, that's now useless. <laughs> However, it's not useless from a willpower perspective because if we actually this card and this card would allow us to boost our willpower if we were going to use shriveling. So there we go. Okay. Um, okay, we move into the Mythos phase. We're in this turn six, only turn six. There are two Doom on Rise of the Ghouls. Here we go again. What are we going to get from the Encounter deck? And the Encounter deck gives us... Oh, okay, that's all right. Ancient Evils, I can live with that. That's all right. Put another Doom on here. There we go. That's, that's okay. We can, you know, an extra Doom here or there isn't going to hopefully make a lot of difference. Okay. So we are now in the investigation phase. Put three actions on Carolyn. Now obviously we could we could move up to the hallway this go. And we could trigger the ghoul priest. Um but we we're not really in a position we're in a position to get Leader Chandler on board, but we're not really in a position to tackle the Ghoul Priest under any circumstances. Now, I'm not sure if we'll ever be in a position to tackle the Ghoul Priest, but at the moment we certainly are not. Um, I mean, we could, what we could do is we could move up to the hallway um, and then just say, look, we're not, we're not, it's, it's unlikely. But if we had the machete and shriveling, it is possible. It is possible we could we could do it, but we're not going to get anywhere unless we've got more cards. So what I'm going to do is I am going to move out of the cellar in case the icy ghoul turns up, first of all. So I'm going to move out of the cellar and then I'm going to draw cards. So my second card is first aid. So this normally is a good card. However, it's got three supplies, healer damage or a horror. The only damage or horror that's going to get healed is this card. Horror and Ritual may be healed as if it were Carolyn Fern and there's no horror. Um, so it would just be used up literally healing this. There's no, um, and, and it wouldn't, there would still be a horror on it. So I'd need another card, the only other card that heals horror. And so unfortunately that's of no use whatsoever because there's no, it's not like you take a mental trauma for having this at the end of the game or anything. So basically this just stops us and makes, it's, we're better off using it for its willpower as much as anything. And then for a final, we'll draw another card, please get shriveling or something, come on, ah, medical texts. Okay, so this is a reasonable card because um, it's got a fight pip, but it allows us to... Um, to heal some some damage because at the moment we're quite high on that having said that though um it's not going to help us in the long run so, <laughs> so the question is now do we hold out for another turn because we could to see whether you know we could bring out the medical text and heal ourselves some some damage do we do that or do we go, it's not going to happen. Let's just trigger the ghoul priest and get out of here with leader Chandler. Um, so even if we triggered the ghoul priest, we were going to have to take, we would take an attack of opportunity to move to the parlor. So I just realized we, we don't have, we've lost the guard dog and we've lost Milan Christopher. There is, there is the librarian, but if we had to take an attack of opportunity from the ghoul priest, we would die. So actually, I can see what we have to do. There's, this is not working. There's only one thing we can do. Get our medical text. Heal ourselves some damage so that we can withstand an attack of opportunity from the ghoul priest. Parley leader Chandler. And then resign. That's the uh, 
that's what I think we need to do because I think anything else is unlikely. If we'd had the guard dog ready and, you know, um, we, we'd t taken hardly any damage, we had the guard dog ready and we, we had shriveling or machete or something, I would feel like we could take on the ghoul priest, but um, I, I'm i really feeling like the likelihood of us defeating the ghoul priest um, seems low. It's amazing we've gotten this far, so uh, I think I think that's the path to take. Heal some damage. Next go, then the go after that. Oh no! And then at the end of that turn, trigger the ghoul priest. The and then the turn after that is when we take the attack of opportunity. We get leader Chandler, and we resign. That's the plan. I hope you agree with me. Crowd is is actually quite quiet and tense. Uh, because they're hoping Carolyn does well, but things have been a bit dicey. We move into the enemy phase. No enemies attacking or anything. We move into the upkeep phase. We get hyper-awareness. Now, hyper-awareness um, could be one way. So that's one way we could potentially evade the ghoul priest if we have enough resources. But the problem is it will cost... Here we go again with this card. It costs two to bring out... It then, then you need more resources to use it, and we're at a and we're at a paltry two, so we'd need at least four resources, I suppose, to to make it reasonable with the ghoul priest. And yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, no. Sorry. Okay. So that, um, I think we could use it maybe to evade a ghoul minion, something like that. But no. Ah oh dear. Okay, let's move into the mythos phase. So here we are. There are now four doom on here. So we do. And it's turn seven. So we we are losing momentum, but we've got a, a plan of action. Okay, let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck gives us well, well, well. There we go. A ghoul minion. A ghoul minion. Yes. There we go. So that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, okay. All right. It could really stymie things. Because from a fight perspective, we're a two, it's a two, and we're a two, it's a two. So it's two, 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 two. Um, hmm. Okay, so we move into the investigation phase. Three actions on Carolyn. So we have a couple of choices here. The first choice is to try and evade the ghoul minion, which would mean hyper awareness, I think, is the only card. So we would commit hyper awareness, which give, would give us a three versus a two, so a minus one or better, which is okay. Um, and maybe evade the um, ghoul minion. Um, then we can um, we can um, we could bring out medical texts and we could heal a damage. The problem is though that um, <sighs> problem is the ghoul minion is then going to return with the ghoul priest. So that's then uh, how much does this heal one damage? The other alternative is to punch the uh, ghoul minion. So we're a two versus a two. So we could use this, which would allow us to do one point of damage. And then we would have to try and do a second point of damage to kill it. Would be the other alternative. And then we lose that. The other alternative... It's no good. There's no good solutions here. I think we evade evade the ghoul minion. Maybe we should have stayed in the cellar. Maybe we should have stayed in the cellar. I think my concern is that if we try and um, 
if we just evade the ghoul minion, we're just putting off the inevitable. But if we... Because what do we get here? We get... Uh, what are we up to? Four... Six. So we would get two fight. Three fight. No, two, we'd see we'd have to go two fight. So four versus two. And then we'd have to go three versus two. Because there's no other fight cards. And then if that didn't work, then we'd evade. But at least we would have done some damage. And then we might get something like a machete. So maybe that's the way to go. Because I'm worried that if we just evade. Um, and then if we have the ghoul priest and the ghoul minion. We're then in a situation where we're going to take even more attacks of opportunity. So I think I think we've got to try and do that. So I'm going to try and fight this ghoul minion. So we're going to use Steadfast to do that. So Steadfast, oh, but then we need this card to heal. And there's no other way of healing in this deck. So maybe we evade and draw cards. I think what we'll do is we'll try and evade. If the evasion fails, then I think we go for a fight strategy because I don't think there's anything else we can do. So let's do that. Let's evade the ghoul minion. It's a three versus a two. So it's a minus one or better. Chaos bag gives me a minus one. So we evade the ghoul minion. It's exhausted. Okay, so now we could either move back into the cellar. Yes, we take a damage, but we can heal three damage. Or we just draw cards and hope that we draw some cards that we need. Because then if we don't draw what we need... Um, We're going to be on all kinds. I feel like we need to we need to move back into the cellar because otherwise, what are we going to do next? Go. We'd need more fight cards, so we'd be hoping that we draw a machete or we draw the shriveling. Um, if we draw either of those, then we're fine. I think. I think we're fine, but if we don't, then we're going to be in all kinds of trouble. So that would give us five, and this gives us... Oh, this is... Oh, I kept thinking this has charges on it. We can just keep healing damage. So let's do that. Let's do that. So the second action, we're going to move back into the cellar, which means we take another damage. This is a bit risky, I know. Then we spend two, and we bring out the medical texts so we can... We'll get rid of the flashlight. We don't need the flashlight. So we bring out the medical text. So we evaded, we moved, and we brought out the medical texts. Okay. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully nothing nasty will draw. So and then hopefully that will set us up and then we can move back into the hallway and we can kill the um, the, the, the ghoul minion. All right, so enemy phase, no enemies, ghoul minions back up, and we get the barrier. Not only enemies cannot move into attached location. Is he elite? No. So we could attach that to the hallway. So that that actually would be a good card to use, but it's also got great pips on it. So it's got two... Actually, I don't like this card most of the time, but this card actually could... Um, if we end up in the next phase, we'll stop um, the Icy Ghoul moving into the hallway. It would stop the Flesh Eater from moving into the hallway. Uh, and therefore would give us a bit, buy us a little bit more time. So, um, or we can use it because it's got a evasion and a willpower pip. So either of those is helpful. But we still need a shriveling or a machete, which we have neither. So the Mythos Phaser is now five on here. So we move into the, uh, and we draw the from the Encounter deck. And the Encounter deck is 
rats. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Except if we don't manage to kill the rats, we are dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Oh, well. Okay. We. <laughs> I told you that the monsters were a real problem for um, Carolyn. So we put three actions. So, well, this focuses the mind. We um, We need to kill these rats. They're a one and we are a two. Um, do we want to throw a fight? I got, uh, we could throw this in, but it feels like we're then using up. Let's just see if we can do it first go. Okay, first action, one versus two. Chaos Bag has, draws a cultist again. Is that right? Draws a cultist. Okay, which is a minus one. Fantastic. So we kill the rats. Wow. Oh, man, this is on the edge of your <laughs> edge of your seat stuff. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, choose an investigator. Test two, if you succeed, heal a damage, and we are a four. So the next thing I'm going to do is heal a damage. So that's a two versus a four. Chaos bag has minus one. So that, that means we heal a damage. I just realized if you fail, deal two damage. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, and then let's let's do it again. Let's let's get this down. So we'll do it again. Uh, so it's a two versus a four. Chaos bag has an elder sign. Um, so it's successful. So that's now down to three. Now the elder sign is um, plus one. You may heal one horror, horror, horror from an investigator. You can't do that. The horror comes off here because this is may be healed as if it were Carolyn Fern. So we take off a horror from here. Okay. So there we go. So that was an edge of your seat stuff. We um we we killed the rats. We used the medical texts twice um to heal two damage and one of them was an elder sign. So we also took a damage off rational thought. Oh, boy. Enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase and we get the machete. Oh, yes. Oh, at last. Oh, my goodness. We have the machete. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So uh, that's that's good. Okay. That's helpful because that means we can take on the ghoul minion. We can kill the ghoul minion and then we're able to... Yeah. Okay. Oh, if we could get Machete and we could get um, Shriveling out, we're in a much better place. So we move into the Mythos phase. There's now six on here, so this will this will turn the next time. It could even turn this time if we get Ancient Evils, but at the moment it's next time. So let's see what we get from the Chaos Bear, uh, from the Encounter deck. And the Encounter deck has... Oh, no, really? Really? Another Grasping Hands. Okay, so it's a three and we are a two. So there's only one card here we can commit, which I was hoping we wouldn't have to, but I think we better. Because if we take three, we are dead. This 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 could finish us. So we are a three versus a three. Chaos bag is a minus three. Is that it? Yes, I think that is. Test three. We are a three. Minus three puts us to zero. We take three points of damage, ladies and gentlemen. This feels like we've had a run of these, doesn't it? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Carolyn takes three three points of damage and uh, bows out at uh, turn nine with a um, physical trauma after a grasping hands. So there we go. That, um, and I wonder, I wonder whether we were uh, going to see shriveling anytime soon. Yes, we would have seen shriveling next time. So we could, we could, we could have been in a position where we could have, uh, anyway, it wasn't going to happen. We, um, 
we we just it was just too difficult. I always knew that it was going to be tough with Carolyn. Her fight and her evasion make it very very difficult to 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 manage things. We started off blisteringly fast. We were up in the attic um, in turn one. We uh, unfortunately then. Uh, in the attic, we drew the ravenous ghoul, the worst possible ghoul we could have drawn, really. Um, and whilst we managed to defeat that, it it meant we lost Milan Christopher and the guard dog in the process. And then from then on in, it was really survival mode and very, very difficult. It was a miracle we managed to get all the clues in the attic and the cellar as it was. Um, and, but the, the problem being that we'd just taken too much damage along the way. So there we go. That's Carolyn Fern. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do apologize that the last two or three videos have been uh, less positive than some of the earlier ones, but that's the way it goes in the investigator games. Not everybody can be top of the table. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we'll see where Carolyn is uh, on the table after this video. She won't be at the bottom, but not far from the bottom. Uh, and next time in the Investigator Games, I believe we'll be uh, running through the gathering with Joe Diamond. So we will see how Joe does in the gathering. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to that. But until that time... Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.